welcoming you back to the desk of Cadicorus. Join us as we partake into a new installment of Current Quickies. Hello, my duckies, and this time we're going to be having a look at Beyond Two Souls. Cure. This game here is very hit and miss. When it comes to Quantic Dream, they've always striven to seamlessly blend movies and games together in their projects, and where Fahrenheit, also known as Indigo Prophecy, was a great first attempt at this, 2010's Heavy Raid, in my opinion, more or less nailed it, giving you a dark crime thriller with dozens of endings, plot twists, optional scenes, four different character stories crossing over, and every choice you made impacted the outcome of every single scene. Then I heard about the other Quantic Dream project involving Ellen Page and Willem fucking Defoe, involving the same themes as Heavy Rain, but with paranormal entities. Yes, I was very intrigued, and I was really hoping that they would expand and improve on everything that made Heavy Rain so great to begin with. But the question is, how was it then? Well... <gasps> This game is pure wasted potential. Despite a more critically acclaimed bunch of actors and three years passing to improve on the flaws of Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls instead improves on some things but consequentially detracts from absolutely everything else. But let's start off with the things that make this game worth a look. Firstly, like always, we begin on presentation, and the presentation is brilliant. Not only do the environments look so real and raw, but the characters' emotion capture are absolutely fantastic, and not to mention they're a huge step up from Heavy Rain overall. It captures everything perfectly to the extent of actually feeling like a real movie, and the widescreen letterboxing is a real nice touch to the whole process. I've really gotta say, some scenes left me in complete awe. Along with the presentation, I actually really like the plot. And where it's nothing insanely different, it's decently executed as you explore the ins and outs of Jody's extraordinary life with her paranormal entity known as Aiden. And when I say extraordinary life, I'm not even joking. There are plenty of diverse and extremely hard-hitting scenes that span over every single aspect of Jodie's life, with themes ranging from isolation to child abuse, and where I talk about well-executed, I really mean that. The acting is really great from the characters, minus a few exceptions, and when there are some deeper, intense parts of drama and story, they are all brilliantly done by the acting and the fucking excellent music score. And I will admit that I was touched and actually crying by more than one scene in the game. Don't look at me like that. I have a sensitive heart. Also, the way that you control a paranormal entity attached to Jodie is a very cool idea, and it actually amounts to most of the fun you'll have in the game. Speaking of which, the majority of the gameplay is similar to Heavy Rain, but with a few major differences. Even in including some stealth elements thrown in, and in some cases, a bigger sense of freedom. Also, the quick time action events have been replaced by slow-mo sections where you need to finish off Jody's actions by pushing the right direction with the right stick. And where some people have called it ambiguous and a little bit cheap, I actually found it a great idea requiring a lot more thought and engagement with the action. So yeah, anyway, that's the good stuff. <sighs> I need to slow down. I need to seriously slow down and... Now, despite all of that stuff, there is a fair bit wrong with this game. <gasps> Even though the gameplay had nice additions over Heavy Rain, more often than not, it's a complete fucking mess. For example, the rules of Aiden and when, where, and how you can use him change in nearly every single part of the game after a cutscene. In terms of where he can go, who he can kill or possess, how far he can travel away from Jody, it's actually a complete mess, and it only exists as a plot device where it actually could have been something great. Also, where there are some really good and powerful moments in entire sequences, there are also some horribly contrived, terribly boring, and uninteresting sequences. For example, the whole desert ranch scene where you explore the origins of the spirits in Aiden's world. But where it starts out great, it's then executed in such a drawn out, long, and hideously yawn inducing way that I almost felt like giving up entirely. These moments are only there for David Case to try and tell him more needlessly complicated story than it actually is. Also, the other huge drawback is the plot structure. In order to keep fresh and compensate for the lack of controlling multiple characters with branching paths, this game decides to take a weird approach and have a completely split and non-linear timeline, jumping back and forth between certain events to spice things up. By the way, Jody does actually explain at the start of the game that her mind is in fragments, and therefore this entirely makes sense for the benefit of the plot. And where, for a game based on life, I actually find that a really cool idea, the whole major highlight of Heavy Rain's gameplay is sacrificed, being able to make giant plot-changing decisions and mistakes. The whole story itself is very linear and fully planned out, except for the very ending, and where, yes, in most cases, games are like that, when you're more or less controlling a quick-time virtual movie, the ability to make an impact with your choices is more than necessary. And yes, you can make some choices to affect the outcome of certain scenes and the way that they're played, and sometimes it opens up some different and sometimes fun scenes. But the whole trajectory of the game and its plot cannot be changed, and you make no real mistakes. And the only endings can be deciphered right at the very end, which seriously isn't very good at all. Not only that, but because of this non-linear and planned out downfall in the story, you can actually get through most of the quick time stages without doing a single thing. I mean, what is this bullshit? And finally, because of all of this combined, this then makes some of the twists in the story completely worthless as we know exactly what's going on due to the non-linear and huge time jumps, and because of what the game wants you to do due to the restrictive gameplay mechanics. But like I said, there are some brilliant moments worth playing through alone, and it's entertaining enough from beginning to end to keep you invested. In conclusion, in my opinion, this game really does drive forward in lots of aspects, and attempts to go even more ambitious than Heavy Rain. But at the same time in trying to do so, it tries too hard and ends up being more complicated and messy as a result. I mean, it really should have just been that little bit simpler. However, it's most definitely worth a rental if you ask me, because there are lots of things here that are worth checking out, but as for the rest, it falls down so much that it's actually very sad, and the replayability only exists to grab more trophies and nothing much else at all. Other than that, the effort shown in this game is really clear on all aspects, and the good stuff here is actually really, really good. And if Quantic Dream can combine the elements of Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls into their next project, I think they would have nailed it. I'll give this game the acceptable, but not completely and utterly god-awful, 6 out of 10. Cure.